The sun is the key to your survival. Melanin is a blessing and it can also be a curse. And currently what we are witnessing with the spraying through the skies. You think this is all a coincidence that Billy Goats wants to cover the skies, cover the sun? What's that doing? That's preventing you from absorbing and producing vitamin D, which is a very important antioxidant to help your body fight off infections. Very interesting. Melanin, it can be a blessing and it can be a curse. The blessing is that you can stay out in the sun a lot longer than, than I could. I, I wish I could stay out in the sun for three hours without my shirt off, without getting burned. But I can go about a max about an hour out in the sun before I start getting really burned. Well, I guess my ancestors, when they came across the uh, original great continent, they went through Europe and they just were getting a lot less sun. So their bodies became more pale to deal with the environment and that allowed their bodies to absorb vitamin D much faster. So we can get our vitamin D much faster than a person with darker skin, but we get burned fast. So that's a drawback. So you see, there's all, there's always give and take with everything. There's advantages and disadvantages. I mean, if you're black, you're built for the sun. You should be out in the sun a lot more than a white person. You should get probably triple the amount of sun. Probably about three hours a day, two hours a day is what you need. And if you can't get that, you're probably going to need more vitamin D supplements just to boost your body up during these times. We're going to be coming into the winter time, and you're going to see lots of these different uh, supposed strains or whatever. But if your immune system is down, you're not getting enough vitamin D, you're probably going to suffer more than a person who lacks the melanin that you have. For me, I wish I had a little bit more melanin so I could spend more time out in the sun because I love being out in the sun. But not everybody's like that, especially nowadays. You have a lot of people that just spend so much time indoors. But your key to survival is the sun. Now it's going to be harder and harder as the deep controllers are controlling. You can look up in the sky and you can see between each cloud. It looks like they're almost trying to connect the clouds and connect the dots. What are they doing? But before 1989, you would see none of that. You wouldn't see those lines in the skies. I talked to friends about it in the military. They're afraid to talk to it about me. They're just like, oh, it's just condensation. It's just condensation, guy. But, you know, I'm not trying to get my military friends in trouble. I understand they got a, they got a rep to keep. You want to get higher up in rank. Now, the people that got the quack scene, they're really going to be in a tight spot. I can't make any promises to you that anything that I say can help you survive what's coming. Unfortunately, you rushed out and you got something that is experimental. And if you would have just listened to us, maybe you could have avoided it. Now, I don't want to say it's time to panic, but I don't want to present a false sense of hope either. Basically, when people are showing at the stores, they're showing blank piece of paper. This is supposed to be called the quaxine package insert. When something is not emergency use authorized and is FDA approved, it's supposed to show you basically the side effects. It's supposed to show you the ingredient list, and you're seeing none of that. You're seeing intentionally blank paper. You think that's good? I don't know about you, but whenever I buy something in the store, I'm reading every freaking ingredient label because I want to know what I'm putting into my body. And you should feel the same way too. You're just going to trust somebody? Because a talking head told you on TV, it's safe, it's safe. I'm sorry, but whenever I hear somebody say it's safe, it's time to step back, reflect, and think, 
you know what? Maybe it's not safe. Because that word gets abused. Safe. Safe could mean anything. Safe to what? So whenever I hear the word safe, I think it's time to be concerned. I really think you're going to be up against the wall if you took that. You're probably going to have to switch up your whole routine now. Me, I switched up my whole routine. And it's probably not enough. But if you took that stinger into your arm, the quacks, the quack scene, you're going to be in for the fight of your life. Right now, you might be feeling good, and that's glad. I'm, I'm glad you're feeling good because there's a lot of people that do not feel good. My neighbor, my Jamaican neighbor, darker skinned than me, he, uh, he passed away this winter. Maybe his vitamin D levels were low and he took it. Uh, I had another neighbor, took it. She looks like she's been deteriorating. My other neighbor in front of me got the Moderno. He ended up with some herpes on his face. His immune system must have been really compromised from the polyethylene glycol, the PEG. What that does, the PEG, it will actually spread throughout your body, the quaxine, about five times more than usual. But this causes a lot of problems with the blood clots, weakening your immune system. What a mess. And it actually freaks me out when we get these broadcasts from, from the Blight House. Creepy Joe will come out and he'll say, We got 300 million quack scenes into arms by this date. And he's just pushing it so freaking hard. And I'm thinking about all the people's lives that have been destroyed. And it it really broke me down. Uh, I get sad, man. This has really freaked me out. Just we're living in the darkest times. This is the dark ages. This is... This makes the Middle Ages look like a cakewalk. And there's videos out there in each state where they have hundreds of thousands of plastic coffins just waiting. Just waiting just to clean up the mess. And it's not a coincidence. So I think things are going to get more bad as the summertime wanes and we go into the fall and winter. That as this ticking time bombs have had time to spread throughout the body. And as the vitamin D levels deplete and the sun hides behind the sky. We're going to have more and more people fall victim to pay attention to false information. You're in the, for the fight of your life. I've thought about a few things. I'm not a doctor, obviously. I don't look like a freaking doctor. I I went to, I did some college. I did a little anatomy and stuff, but that's about it. But I do pay attention to research. I pay attention to what I've seen with my own eyes, how I've seen people change directly. I've watched a lot, a lot of videos of people that took it, that have been suffering, shaking, and wishing that they could have went back in time and never have done it. And I pay attention to some really smart people of what they're doing, their protocols. Definitely vitamin D is right up there. Changing your diet is right up there. You need to reduce your toxic overload. We are just around so many toxins nowadays. It's really hard to avoid no matter what you eat. You're going to be eating some toxins, breathing in toxins all the time. So you need to be able to give your body enough ammo to fight back and to bring these negative aspects that you can put in your body out. What you can do, you can use a little bit of activated charcoal capsules to start binding some of that stuff to get out of your body. Another thing you can do, you can use pectin, pectin from fruits. Fruit pectin, they used 
apoplectin in Chernobyl to draw out radioactive contamination. That will also work with some of the things that that's going up into the sky, some of the crap they're spraying in our food. I advise you to start eating a lot more fruits that are organic, get some pectin, start applying that to your diet. Also, you might want to look into pine needle tea. There's been a lot of research that has been coming out that there's some compounds in there that can really help you boost your immune system. You get a, a nice vitamin C boost, about five times the amount of orange in pine needle tea. You want to make sure you get something that's edible. So before you go out and just pick any pine needles, you want to make sure that it's not some type of uh, poisonous pine needle because there are out there. Look into protecting your heart. Look for supplements that protect your heart. Look into anti-inflammatories. Turmeric is big. Problem is nowadays a lot of the turmeric comes from India. And I love India. I think that's a great there's a lot of great medicine that comes out of there, but some of it has been compromised. But it grows great here. It grows all year here. I'll actually grind up turmeric in a blender with some fruits and juices with some ginger that gives me a nice anti-inflammatory boost. It's one of the most well-known anti-inflammatory. It's really safe. And you can blend it with a lot of juices, and it, it tastes it can taste pretty good also mixed in food. You can also add a dash of pepper, it helps your body absorb that turmeric about double. The key really is to get a lot of your juices and, and vitamins from nature itself directly from the plant source is the is the purest form. But when you take water that's inside of a fruit, it's going to be much more healthier than from a bottle because bottles plastic bottles generally are going to be compromised even if they're BPA free the other synthetic plastics they're finding out can almost be just as bad anyway I have a distiller that has a lot of positives and be able to take out everything but you're taking out some of the good minerals too so you're losing out on some of the some of the good nutrients but I just like having that pure source of water and Instead of it going into a plastic container, it goes into a glass container. It just feels a little bit more pure and clean like that. So by me using a distiller, I probably need to be getting more magnesium, some of these supplements. Magnesium is big. You want to be getting a lot of magnesium. There's so many uh, functions for your nervous system, help you fight off free radicals. So magnesium is another big one that you want to get. It's going to help your nervous system. It's going to help you calm down. It's going to help you sleep. It's going to help your body repair itself. So that's another key one, that magnesium. You can also look into black seed oil. There's a lot of research that black seed oil can help you. Another one you can look into is hawthorn berry. Hawthorn berry a lot of people will take that if they have issues with their hearts. You can't really heal your heart muscle. Once once you lose a heart muscle cell, it's gone forever. The hawthorn berry can help your blood circulation and help your heart beat better. Another thing you can look into is called NATO kinase. I'm a little bit skeptical about it, but I probably will be getting some soon, even though I really don't want to get into any soy product, but it is from the fermented soy. I Another thing I don't like is some of the soys coming out of Japan, and God bless Japan, but they had the Fukushima nuclear accident, and I'm really skeptical about taking any products from there. I love the Japanese people. I love their culture. But unfortunately, they had a really serious nuclear accident and a lot of the food is compromised that's coming out of there. So now what do you do then? Well, now you have, uh, where are you going to get your soy? China? Is there even any American companies that are making organic soy here in the United States? There should be. We, we, grow, we could grow lots of soy, but, you know, our... Our farmers, most of them, I'm sorry, but the farmers are just spraying chemicals on everything. And I could never, you know, I farm myself, have an organic farm, and I would never knowingly put a chemical on a plant 
and knowing that I'm going to be giving that to somebody and it's got poison on it. I'm sorry, man. I can't do that to, to nobody. And I think it's disgusting. So you really got to know your farmer, talk to them. You know what? And even take it a step further. Say, I want to go inside your shed. If they're embarrassed to show you their shed, they don't have the decency to show you their shed, you might want to just say, forget about it. I'm not buying nothing for you. Never again. You'll find chemicals in the shed and you can start reading ingredients in there. And if you find some harmful pesticides, herbicides, you know, that's going to tell you a lot right there. So another thing to avoiding a lot of the oils that they're using in foods. There's a lot of inflammatory oils that can cause more harm than good. Particularly cannoli oil is a really nasty oil. I've noticed it and it does make foods taste better. It makes them crispier, right? So when you bite into something, you get that nice little crunch, that nice little pop. But that's also what's hardening up your body itself. And you want things to be able to smooth, to, to kind of like smooth, go through your body clean. So when you have these um, modified starches and stuff, I've noticed you put them on soil between the modified and the non-modified. And you find the modified ones sticking towards the top of the soil for longer. So just imagine that's like your body as well. It's going to have a harder time flushing that out to your body. So canola oil is a big one you want to stay away from. Even the organic, they, they say it's just as bad or even worse, that it's even more inflammatory. So stay away from any hydrogenated, partially hydrogenated oils. Uh, if you're going to be cooking with an oil, which you probably want to limit that as well, try not to use any oils when you're frying and stuff. It's not really good. You probably just want to do an air fry if you can. But if you do really have the urge or sensation to use an oil, the probably the safest one is avocado oil. You can use olive oil, but I don't recommend frying with it. You're better off using that as a cold oil in a salad or something like that. After that, you really have to consider, if you're eating meat, you've got to know where that meat's coming from. There's just a lot of cows right now that are next to really hazardous areas and they're eating grass. Even they say it's organic. They're eating maybe some radioactive grass or they're eating some, some chemical grass. So you, you got to know where is your cows coming from, where your chickens are coming from. You got to try to source this stuff. And it's, it's going to be hard because the way our system is designed it's designed not to tell you where farms are and you want to be able to look it up on a map and see okay that's where this cow comes from it's right next to freaking Hershey chocolate factory where they had a nuclear release that's why I, I will not eat Hershey chocolate for nothing nothing and I avoid milk chocolate I only eat dark chocolate with no milk and just sparingly here and there and you know, I have a little chocolate too. I also stopped eating cheese that has been really hard to do for the first few weeks now I don't really miss it too much now but cheese is a big one for a lot of people that's like something that you can't take away from them they're so addicted to pizza yeah I do eat pizza but it's a cheeseless pizza sounds yummy right <laughs> it's not too bad you get used to it so what you need to understand is the power of bioaccumulation. For example, in water, fish surrounded by mercury and other poisons in the water. The fish can absorb by eating plants around its surroundings up to a million times more toxins than the surrounding water. Can you imagine a million times? You are what you eat. So this isn't about being vegan, but this is at least understanding that you have to really be careful where you're sourcing your meat, your fish, your foods. I, it's all suspect. I don't eat fish from the Pacific Ocean. I actually stopped eating fish altogether 
I stopped eating meat as well just recently. Maybe I'll go back to eat meat, but right now I'm just taking my time, you know, getting stronger, getting more healthy. And if I feel like I'm getting weak or something, you know, I'll start sourcing my meat, but I want to be very careful where I get it. And it's very important that you get organic meat. You don't want your animals to be eating GMOs. And you're just bioaccumulating GMO. You're bioaccumulating the herbicides and the pesticides that these animals are consuming. So I had a friend from India. And uh, he was Vedic. And he had water buffaloes. And he actually made a Vedic garden full of all the Indian herbs. Ashwagandha. Uh, holy basil. Tulsi. And the, the animals were so happy. And he didn't eat animals. He doesn't eat beef. He's an Indian. He doesn't believe in that. But they would eat the milk. And I don't drink milk. But if I would drink milk from his cow. Because I know that his animals are eating some of the healthiest, freshest herbs in the world. So you need to think like that. You know, just don't go anywhere, freaking Mickey D's, and get a McSickin' chicken, okay? You need to really source your ingredients, find out where they're being grown. And I know it's tough because meat tastes wonderful and it's great. The same things that make meat very good for you can be bad for you. They concentrate nutrients, they concentrate vitamins. That's why you get that, ooh, you feel strong. You know what I mean? But you gotta consider that. It could be hundreds of times concentration compared to a plant of toxins as well. So it is so important where you're sourcing your meat. You really should go for organic. And you really need to find out where that meat is surrounded from. So I'm just going to leave it right there. I want to thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, subscribe this with your friends. Try to keep this open as possible. Leave some comments down in the description if you have some better ideas. If you have something to add, that's wonderful. This is a journey that we're going to be going on together. And most important thing is don't be scared. Don't live in fear. Your mind is so powerful. We create in our mind first and we determine what can happen later in our lives in the future. The power is within you. Don't cower to the fear tactics. You're better than that. You're stronger than that. All right.